Hello, uh, this is a video about my custom chord schedule that I have set up for uh, my Oscar Schmidt 21 bar chromatic auto harp. Um, uh, I don't really understand the standard setup, the out of the box chord setup for an Oscar Schmidt, um, or I guess uh, any 21, I guess they're all the same, 21 bar auto harp. Uh, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying I don't understand it. Um, and I think part of the reason I don't understand it is that I don't play bluegrass music. I don't play Appalachian Roots music. I don't play any of the styles of music that are really sort of um, typical for auto harp. Um, I love all those styles of music. I want to say that I just am not good at them. Uh, I don't I don't get them, you know, sort of well enough. Uh, so it may be, and I don't know, but it may be the case that uh, if I really understood those styles of music, that I would understand the standard 21 bar layout. Um, but I don't, and I don't. Uh, I play mostly um, pop, rock, and folk music. Uh, um, some of my tastes are a little off the off the beaten path, um, but they're not drastically, you know, outside of. Uh, you know, what's typical. I, I like Cloud Cult and I like the Mountain Goats and I like the Beatles. And um, so I've been trying to find uh, a way of setting up the chords that made sense to me that would maximize versatility and ease of play and minimize hand motion and minimize having to learn stuff. That was the goal here. Um, so how did I do that? Well, I started at the top, what I think of as the top center, um, right? So this is the top. And, I, you know, I thought about how does the hand fall when, it, when you sit? I know some people like to put the majors in the middle and things up here, auxiliary chords or something. Uh, but I, you know, looked at where the hand was and, um, and I focused on these four fingers. So I start in the middle with uh, C major. And then uh, on the index finger side, it's G major. And on the ring finger side, it's F major. Okay. So right away, with those three chords, I can play. Which probably sounds like a lot of songs you've heard before. Um, because these are in fifths, the relationship doesn't change if I move to there and make this D major. And I can keep that relationship if I move up one more and make this middle one uh, is now D major and this one is A major. And again, coming back to the center, which is C, that's F. To move down to F, I add a B flat. I move down to B flat, I add an E flat. So it's just the circle of fifths. Um, people usually put C at the top of the circle when they draw it. Um, so here's C, and then around one side, G, D, A, C at the top, F, B flat, E flat, All right? So that's C. Now I looked at where's my thumb. When I put, put these three fingers here, my thumb is right there. So I made that the next most common chord, which is minor six. So I can play, that was the axis progression. Um, and that's also, uh, uh, I can use the same four chords to play the doo-wop changes.
pa 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 di da di pa 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 di da di da 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 di da da. Right, and that same right set of related four chords is the same regardless of where I stick my middle finger, as long as all three fingers are on the top row. Okay, well, because of that, because uh, of the way these chords are interrelated, having it so that the minor six of G is right there and the minor six of D is right there, well, those are related, uh, which means that uh, here, from here, if I'm in C major, and this is minor six, this is two, and this is three. Two, three. Or um, D minor, E minor, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, sorry, six, You notice I skipped one, which is seven. So I did not include seven diminished uh, in, in here. And the reason for that is uh, a, a couple fold. Uh, one is that, or the primary reason is that by itself it just doesn't show up that much in the music that I play. Um, the next reason is that I had to make some sacrifices in order to fit the amount of things on here that I wanted to fit on here. And then uh, maybe the most important reason from a music standpoint is that uh, d seven diminished is fully a subset of five, seven. So in C major, right? C major, I have G. I put the seven version, the dominant seven version of the chords that have it on here directly below it. So this is G. This is G7. G, G7. And the reason I did that is that the most likely time that I'm going to play G7 is in the key of C. Right? G, C, but sometimes G7 to C. Right? Um, it's not often that you need to go G7, G, G7, G. It happens, uh, but not often. And uh, so keeping them on the same finger, uh, not too problematic, not too problematic. Um, and so that holds up for, um, you know, in the key of D. all the way over here. And where it breaks down, just because of choices I've made, is when I get to B flat. I don't have an F7. Uh, and the reason I don't have an F7 is that I really uh, very much want, well, do I have an F7? No, I don't. That is G sus4. We'll talk about why I have that there in a second. Um, so the primary purpose of this instrument is to play in C, F, and G, and then the fact that I can also play in additional, two additional keys, which are D and B flat, is a bonus. On this side, we lose something in D, which is minor three. It would be here, it would be F sharp minor, it would be the next button on this bottom row if you kept going, and it's not there, right? Uh, I could have shifted all of these things over and made this F sharp and so forth, but then your finger pattern for uh, the four chords would be here, and then you'd have to get your thumb all the way to here, and I just don't like it. Um, I'm, I might experiment with it at some point because maybe you can get some flexibility and it can work, but I, I just don't think that it's a good approach. Um, and then, so on this side with D, remember D and B flat are sort of auxiliary keys. They're extras, they're bonuses. Um, 
it, on this side we lost minor three from D, and on this side on B flat we lose um, we lose F seven. Just to have to make sacrifices in order to get everything on here that that I wanted. And what was it that I wanted? Well, I really really wanted um, uh, suspended uh, uh, suspensions. So uh, the, I have three, actually four apparently, uh, suspended chords here. I've got uh, G, C, and F. Um, I'm guessing that's B flat, but I don't actually know. Um, G, C, and F sus4. And the reason for that is, if you look at where my hands are, for the key of F, my pinky sort of naturally or with a little bit of work, lands right there. And so that allows me to use it as sort of an auxiliary. <laughs> Since I was a young boy, I played the silver ball. From Soho down to Brighton, I must have played them all. <laughs> flat it is so I put a B flat down here B flat sus4 um, if I had kept the minors going this would have been um, F minor but uh, you don't I don't really need F minor um, you don't need it until you get to um, like E flat if I wanted to play in the key of E flat I would need F minor but I don't have a four I don't have a flat so it's not gonna help me that much um, so that's, you know, B flat, sus4 is sort of an auxiliary chord. I mean, really all the sus4s are auxiliary chords, but they show up a bunch in, uh, the music that I play and that I write because I like them. I just like the sound of suspensions. Um, so that's, that's basically the layout. It's, I think, really straightforward. It allows you to play, um, again, in any key that is, that are supported. So C, F, and G get everything. So, for example, in the key of, let's say, G, I've got one, I've got two, I've got three, I've got four, I've got five, I've got five, seven, and I've got minor six, and then back to one. And if I really want, uh, you know, a seven diminished, uh, you just play five, seven, because it's a fully enclosed subset of, of G7. Um, so that, again, holds for C, F, and G. And then D, you can play a lot of songs. Uh, not every song, but you can play a lot of songs that show up. Um, and D, uh, as long as you don't need minor three. And over in B flat, uh, you can do everything as long as you don't need uh, F7, which I don't have. And then in C, F, and G, I've also got the suspensions on the pinky. And that's it. There's uh, one additional little uh, bonus that I added. So I'm going to play a major chord, and I'm going to see if, see if you can hear, hear the little bonus thing that I threw in here. Did you hear? Um, I added a nine to all the major chords. Every single major chord has an extra nine. Um, just one, just at the top. I didn't put it in all the octaves. I just put it in the top. So for example, in C, uh, nine in C on C major is D. So. Uh, why did I do that? I like it. I like the sound. Um, add nine, so it's not it's not like C nine. C nine would be a dominant nine with a 
you know, a minor seven and then a nine on top of that um, would be a uh, C9. This is C add nine or F add nine or G add nine. Um, it's a chord. It's a major chord that doesn't have a seventh, but does have the major ninth in it, um, which is also a second, but it's not a like sus two because it also has the third. And that gives you a little bit of a sparkle. It doesn't change the function of the chord at all. Um, it doesn't sound out of place. It doesn't sound, it doesn't change its, you know, direction of, uh, you know, resolution or momentum. It doesn't, um, make it sound any really less restful. Um, it just, it gives it a little bit of bright sparkle contemporary sound. I love, um, the add nine sound. Uh, I play it on piano, like probably too much. Um, and I, you know, I just sort of add it to things all the time. Um, in my own work and so I just added it here and you know you don't have to play it because you know if you're just sort of playing kind of guitar music and you're and um which is why I sort of tend to play in the middle um again because I'm sort of I don't know, mimicking guitar or something. Um, and then, you know, I can just... You sort of strum up at the end or maybe strum down from the top at the end of a song. It gives it a little bit of a magical sparkle um, that I really appreciate. So that's my chord, uh, that's my chord schedule. Um, Again, it starts with C, circle of fifths, G, D, A, from C, F, B flat, E flat, over one and down for A minor, and then A, E, B from A, D, G minor, C minor. This would be F minor, except it isn't. It's B flat sus four, uh, F sus four, C sus4, G sus4. Um, that's how I have it laid out. And if you wanted, if you played a different style of music, but you liked the idea uh, of this, maybe you'd uh, put uh, diminished your, you know, seven diminished here. Uh, and, and that would uh, give you the things that you need for that. Um, or maybe, I don't know, if you play a lot of like heavy metal or something and you wanted to put like uh, your power chords through here, you could do that. Um, I, you know, so if you think of the sort of the little point of this layout, uh, you can think of these as like auxiliary or at least these three. If you really wanted F7, you could put F7 there and then you'd have three auxiliary buttons. And I might change to that. I might do F7 here and then... GCF suspended, um, you know, if I find that I really need F. Uh, I think ideally, um, if you're using this layout and you want to play as many pieces of music as possible, you'd get three auto harps. And that's sort of my long-term plan is to have this set up just like this to play in these uh, three plus two keys. And then um, uh, another one that plays in like, uh, e, A, and D as the three centers, and then has got the uh, um, uh, the bonuses on that would be G and B uh, major, and then another one on the that would be like on this end, which would be uh, uh, E flat, B flat, and A flat. Um, within the bonuses would be like uh, what a F and D flat, which you know you don't play in D flat you don't play in B major all that much I think guitars sometimes do um, but three auto harps three chromatic auto harps if you play um, you know th the styles of music that I play uh, a lot of four chord songs a lot of folk songs um, uh, you're this this works really well um, some difficulties with this layout um, well, I haven't played it long enough to know all the tr problems that it might run into, but one thing that I see as potentially difficult 
is uh, minor, particularly minor moded rock music. Um, I've been working on Hotel California recently uh, with this layout. And I have to say, uh, this layout's not bad for Hotel California. So you have like uh, F minor. <laughs> So, what you notice, my hand is having to move a lot more to play minor moded stuff, and and it's it's almost sideways. So, like rather than playing like this, I have to play like this. Keep my thumb on D seven, and then sort of find my way around that way. Um, I I don't know. Um, I haven't like really explored the minor rock. Uh, idiom to see if that's gonna if that's gonna continue to be a problem. I think Hotel California is uniquely complex, um, but because minor keys actually have more chords in them, because the sixth and the seventh can be um, either uh, uh, flatted or or raised, um, I, I think that setting up minor moded auto harp is going to be is going to present a unique challenge um i i would like i have sort of a beater auto harp i got for 100 bucks from an estate sale uh, i am going to try to set it up i think at some point as a uh to to try to figure out well if i uh stay in one key but i have 21 chords or stay in like two keys but i have 21 chords could i uh sort of manage a minor uh moded thing. I, I don't know. I don't know what that's going to look like. If you have uh, set up a minor moded auto harp uh, to play minor modal music, um, I'd love to, to sort of know how you do what's different. If you think that you've got a chord schedule that's a little better than this or uh, have questions, um, I'd love to hear them. I'd love to hear suggestions for improving this, um, especially if you understand what I'm trying to do. I'd I'd appreciate uh, uh, suggestions uh, for improvements. Um, and, and I'm also curious uh, if you have thoughts about how to apply a similar concept to, for example, a diatonic. Um, I have some ideas, but I haven't quite got there yet with a diatonic or a limited number of keys um, uh, harp. Um, anyway, that's my... That's my schedule. Uh, I really appreciate you listening and watching. I'd appreciate it even more if you would like the video. Um, the little button, uh, you know, under the video matters. It's dumb, but it does. Um, so if you click the little like button, and then if you like auto harp uh, or the things that I like, maybe subscribe to the channel. Um, Please like it, whether or not you're going to subscribe. But if you uh, if you want to hear from me on a regular basis, you can subscribe. I've been trying to put out videos as often as possible, and um, and you can be the first one to see my new auto harp content. Um, so uh, thank you very much. <laughs>